Good evening and welcome to the candidate forum for the Office of U.S. Congress District 9. This event is being recorded. I'm Susan Swearingen with the League of Women Voters of Glenview Glencoe. This forum is being held in partnership with the Wilmette Public Library and is co-sponsored by the League's the Leagues of Women Voters of Arlington Heights area, Deerfield Lincolnshire, Evanston, Glenview Glencoe, Park Ridge, Wilmette, and Winnetka Northfield Kenilworth. These leagues cover most of the new ninth district in partner in, in of the new ninth district. Special thank you to the Wilmette Library for its assistance with its Zoom facilities, the tech technical aspects, and with publicity. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. We do not support or oppose any candidate or political party. Our mission is to encourage informed and active participation in government, increase understanding of major public policy issues, influence public policy through education and advocacy, and take action on governmental issues for which positions have been adopted through extensive member study and agreement. The League is hosting this forum because we believe that while voting itself is important, an informed vote is ideal. As Thomas Jefferson once said, an educated citizenry is a vital requisite for our survival as a free people. Providing this forum allows citizens to become better informed about the issues facing our community and better acquainted with the candidates running for office who once elected will be responsible for addressing those issues. I'd like, to take, I'd like to thank the candidates for their participation. We appreciate your willingness to share your thoughts and positions with the citizens of the 9th District so that they may make an informed choice when they cast their ballots in this upcoming election. Before we begin, I'd like to point out some important upcoming dates related to the uh, November election. Mail-in ballots are now being sent out and you can still request one through November 3rd. October 24th is the first day of early voting and the availability of secure locks, lock boxes for your vote by mail ballots at early voting sites. November 7th is the last day for early voting and the last day to drop off vote by mail ballots at the lock boxes. And November 8th, of course, is the election. I also want to make you aware of a powerful tool provided by the League of Women Voters of Illinois. The Illinois Voter Guide is a 100% nonpartisan portal for all election information. For example, with this tool, you can check your registration status, register online, apply for a mail-in ballot, or find your polling place location. With this guide, you can also build, build your ballot based on your address, and then research inter information for the candidates on your ballot. The guide can be found at illinoisvoterguide.org. And with that, let's begin. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Patty Lackman, who will review the rules of the forum before we get started. Patty lives in Batavia outside the 9th District. As a league member for 22 years, she has moderated over 100 forums and has served in the positions of President and Voter Services Chair. Patty cur currently holds the office of Vice President, along with Chair of the Voter Services Committee of the League of Women Voters of Central King County. Patty? Thank you, Sue. Welcome. As um, Sue indicated, I am not a voter in the 9th Congressional District, and so I have no skin in this race. One of the purposes of the League is to promote political responsibility through the informed and active participation of citizens in government. Providing this forum allows citizens to become better informed about the issues facing their community and to become better acquainted with the candidates running for office. We're happy to provide this service for the community. Here are some basic rules of the road for the candidates. Candidates will restrict themselves to answering questions posed by the moderator, me. This is a forum, not a debate. Once both candidates have responded to a question and I have moved on to a new question, the candidates are not to return to answer the previous question. As I indicated, this is a forum, not a debate. Personal and negative attacks are not acceptable in any response. I will be the final arbiter of any dispute. Consider this a job interview, an opportunity for the vote, voting public in the 9th Congressional District to hear your positions. Not, they do not want to know what you think your opponent might do. 
They want to know what you would do. Questions have been collected from the league and during the Zoom registration process. They were screened for duplication, clarity, and appropriateness. The candidates have not been provided the questions before this forum. The audience will not have an ability to submit additional questions during the forum. Each candidate will present an introductory two minute statement. The order determined alphabetically, then questions will be asked and each candidate will have up to 90 seconds to respond in alternating order. Closing statements will be 90 seconds. Candidates, please notice the timers. You will be given notice when 30 seconds are left to finish your remarks. When you see the stop sign, you may finish your sentence. Candidates for the 9th Congressional District are Maxwell Rice and Jan Schakowsky. We will begin our opening statements with candidate Rice. You have two minutes. Yeah, thanks League of Women Voters. Nice to meet you, Jan Schakowsky. And uh, this my, I know my, gram, my grandma Debbie, Andy, my mom are watching. My favorite League of Women Voters, shout out to you. Shower right here in Cary, Illinois. If, if you guys are listening to this live, I'd like to hear some noise, please clap. Uh, and I come from Rogers Park. I look forward to going home tonight and swinging some chickens for uh, for us. And uh, I'm in Cary. I'm going home to Rogers Park, and somehow that's the same district. And the reason why is because Illinois Democrats believe in science, except when it affects election chances. And it's it's kind of a cop out to say that because at the same time, if Republicans were in power, they would have gerrymandered things just as bad. And Republicans, and Democrats pretend to disagree on a lot, but when it comes to like war, stealing from us, cheating. Uh, like a like crowning way to give an edge. Then they, then it's all kumbaya, let's all hold hands, smoke the Hunter Biden uh, peace pipe. But uh, so a lot of people ask like, what does Kerry have in common with Rogers Park and Evanston? And on the surface, not many, but that's, that's the big lie. The big lie is that we don't have much in common. When the only truth that I know to be true is Shema Yisrael Adonai Alehenu Adonai Ha'ad Rushem Kibol Ma'utel Elam Ha'ed, that we all are one. And that when Jan Schakowsky is happy, I'm happy. Sue, when you're, when you're successful, I'm successful. When everyone in the district is safe, I'm safe. And so uh, I do think we all have sit skin in the game and then we all kind of share goals. And uh, Jan Schakowsky, like at the end of the day, I do think you're a hypocrite. I do think you completely sold out and you've made my life tangibly worse, but I love you and I want you to be successful and I want you to be happy. I want your family to be happy. Just uh, not in Congress. <laughs> I want you to be in the book of life, not in the book of Congress. And so uh, I just want to correct one, one record. I'll make an announcement right now, the Women Voters is you guys have been spreading out that I'm running as a Republican. The first thing I'll do when I'm in office is I'm going to uh, uh, get rid of that Republican label, being independent. Because like times are too messed up. We're way too polarized right now. We need to focus on the things that we need. Uh, that's my time. That Thank need. you, Candidate Rice. Thank you. Candidate Schakowsky, your opening statement, please. Mute, unmute. There we go. I'm so sorry. Um, first, let me thank the League of Women Voters and for all the work that you've done to protect our whole system of voting and educating voter, uh, voters in so many different respects. You know, it is such a, an honor and a privilege and a responsibility to be one of 535 Americans who actually is able to make decisions for the rest of the, uh, of the country. I, uh, I'm very, I hold very sacred that privilege. Um, the 9th Congressional District is a very diverse di district, one of the most diverse in the country is people from every corner of the world, um, from every race and, and, and religion. And we really appreciate working, working together. Um, I've been a lifelong advocate and organizer even well before I was in the United States Congress. Um, my primary goal when I first started running was to see if uh, we were able to achieve universal health care, health care for all Americans. And when I got to Congress, I was able to help write the Affordable Care Act under the Obama administration. Um, and um, that was a, a, a major achievement, but I'm still working to do things like lower the cost of health care, protect Medicare, and make sure that all people can afford their, their health care. Um, 
uh, back in the in the 60s, I was around to help fight for reproductive rights for Americans. And yes, we did pass the um, Roe versus Wade became the law of, of, of the land. But now I'm fighting to make sure that we can restore that. And guess what? We can do that after the next election. The House has already taken the House of Representatives the first step. Um, there was also the Equal Rights Amendment that I was that I've been been fighting for. But let me say Thank the fight. The fight of our life now is defending our democracy. Thank you, candidate Schakowsky. And now we'll move on to the first question, which will be 90 seconds. And we'll start with candidate Schakowsky. What approaches would you pursue to help bring the members of Congress from different parties into agreement on important issues? So I um, am the, um, the chairman of the Consumer Protection Committee in the House of Representatives. And I am proud to say that we have been passing bill after bill in a bipartisan way. One of the most important issues that we're hearing from consumers is that um, they, are, they fear online, they want online protection. And so I have uh, passed a bill out of committee with all the Republicans and uh, all but two of the Democrats supporting the legislation after years of working together to make sure that we're able to pass an online consumer privacy bill that will make everyone confident when they use. So I have all kinds of experience um, doing that. I also have um, passed a lot of consumer protection things that make sure that children's toys are safer in a bipartisan way. And uh, so that that is uh, the, the kind of work that I have been doing for a long time. So um, I, I would say that of all the committees in the House, perhaps um, mine right now um, has been able to operate in an incredibly bipartisan way. And that means sitting down with all the stakeholders, the Republicans, the Democrats, industry, consumers, advocates, experts, and coming together to a consensus. Thank you. Candidate Rice, same question. So I, I'm, I don't want to be bipartisan. So if I were bipartisan, I'd be, you know, Epstein Island is, is very bipartisan. Uh, war is very bipartisan. Uh, you know, uh, uh, passing corporate tax breaks is very bipartisan. I want to be nonpartisan. I want to be pro-people. And what the people want are the needs because they want the price of things to go down. They want cheap energy costs. They want clean water. Illinois still has the most amount of lead water pipes in the nation. And so it's just to focus on the necessities and hold politicians to fire. It's because, uh, like, we just let politicians just make stuff up. But we don't hold them accountable. And I guess I'm out to call, you know, stuff that was just made up earlier. Like, apparently, Jan Schakowsky wrote the Affordable Care Act. Like, which part? It's you know, like a thousand pages long. And so I think it's uh, what you guys are doing, education, and just kind of this people realize the silent majority, they focus on the silent part, they forget about the majority part. Is you the people are the majority, the biggest voter is the non voter. And if we hold politicians accountable, they will get things done. They want to get elected, they want to keep their power. And so I'll be nonpartisan, I will not be bipartisan. And whoever, whatever politician has shared goals with me, whether it be AOC or Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'll work with them on clean water, on the economy, on energy. Thank you. Thank you. Second question, and we'll start with you, candidate Rice. Do you believe that Congress should pass measures to limit greenhouse gas emissions? And if so, what measures? So uh, my campaign has not just been talking about the environment. We've been about the environment. Uh, I named my comedy tours the Lead Pipes County Tours because of the water problem. I care about topsoil quality. I care about water quality. I care about air quality. All of my signs are completely recycled. Uh, instead of like passing out candy during parades, we've been picking up trash throughout the 9th District. And in regards to greenhouse gases, I care about the environment. We got to talk about the environment from a topsoil, water, air quality perspective. But tracking greenhouse gases is just tracking your movements. And so if you were to do some sort of carbon tax, you would see where I go all the time. And so I'm not for that. But environment is my top issue, and that's what keeps me up at night. And uh, uh, Midwest is losing topsoil at a, a 30% over the last 10 years. It's not coming back. We have PFOAs in the water, and Congress pretends like they have little press releases to say we do some about it. But the FDA is not to regulate until 2023 and the Supreme Court has called us out for not doing our job and telling what these federal agencies to do and so environment will be a top issue for me but I think looking at just greenhouse gas is kind of like people on the keto diet where they're just looking I just, we got to eliminate carbs because at the end of the day we breathe 
Like we need to be low carb, not no carb and look at uh, the environment in a very logical scientific way. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Schakowsky. Well, I have been a big supporter of land, uh, landmark legislation that uh, recently passed called the Inflation Reduction Act that had a major piece that, that deals with the, um, am I, did you leave? Um, oh that, no, I had to take a strip that water. Just kind of. Oh, okay. That that deals with um, that that deals with um, about uh, a third of a trillion dollars to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, it's an amazing bill that will also create millions of uh, of jobs, but uh, but this legislation finally gets to the issue. Um, and by the way. I um, will be the proud uh, possessor of an all electric car. I, uh, I, I bought a, um, a Bolt, um, which is a, a small uh, all electric car that I'm gonna get a, a, a this week. Um, so I'm doing it personally and in Congress. Thank you. Next question. And we'll start with candidate Schakowsky. As a representative from a Great Lakes state, what measures do you support to safeguard the availability of clean water for drinking, agriculture, and other needs? Yes, I've worked closely with the um, uh, uh, all the agencies to make sure that our lake, which is such a, a precious, precious asset that we that, that we have right now, the Army Corps of Engineers has been making sure that uh, our lakefront has been. Um, improved at all at all times and um, working with uh, the city and the county as well um, to make that is the Cook County I'm now in other counties as well um, to make sure that we are doing everything to make sure that the water is clean um, as um, um, Max Rice had mentioned though we also have the the, the problem of um, lead in our pipelines and we are actually the, the second um, highest state in the country to have um, the lead that needs to be removed. Hopefully we're gonna see, and I've been pushing a lot for more money for Illinois to get the lead out. Thank you. Candidate Rice, same question. So we have lead, lead pipes brought down rope, like arguably. And so, we, so water's been improving, but we have the second most, our first most amount of lead pipes in the nation. That's very interesting. Uh, I drive an EV too. I just want to connect that information, misinformation. I drive a Tesla, not bragging, Model 3, the budget Tesla, not better at the environment. I support child slavery by driving my Tesla. All those rare Murph minerals are being mined in Africa and South, uh, in Africa and South America and owned by Chinese interests. And so I don't think EVs have any correlation to affecting the environment. Great cars, they actually add like to the electric demand. And in regards to clean water is, yeah, it should be illegal to have like lead, but also PFOAs. It should not be acceptable to have any PFOAs in the water supply. That leads to like 80, like mental illness, it leads to physical illness, like cancer. And 99% of us have it in our bloodstream. So that should be all hands on deck, top, top issue. And the plan in Illinois secured over 50 years. We don't have 50 years. I, uh, I want to be safe. I don't want to be Spider-Man. Like, I don't think radi radioactivity is a good thing. Because with the water supplies, there's, there's issues. So you have lead, you have PFOE, FOAs, other chemicals, and you have plastics. It's because people are dirty. And reckless and don't recycle. And so uh, water, topsoil, and air quality would be top parties for me. And I'm for any all, all above board solutions. Nothing to do with the economy. If we don't have water, what do we have? Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to the issue of voting rights. Let's start with candidate rice. Should voting rights be addressed at the federal level? Why or why not? Federalizing elections is a slippery slope because a lot, a lot of times Republicans want it, a lot of times Democrats want it, and they want it because they want to win their elections. And so I don't think we should, uh, like in Congress, it's our job to regulate and make sure that there isn't fraud and to make sure the states are acting in accordance of free and fair elections. But it's a slippery slope to have the federal government decide how elections are run. And Democrats might want it now because they'll benefit, but then Republicans might want it because they benefit. And we it's just really sad to see that in my lifetime from 2000 to 2020, there hasn't been one election where one group of people have been complained. Like uh, Jan Schakowsky uh, made a formal complaint to the Electoral College in Ohio. 
to revoke that election. And I don't even disagree with you. You're probably right about that. People were mad about 2000, mad about 2004, mad about 2008, mad about uh, Stacey Abrams election, mad about 2016 with, with uh, Facebook Russia investigation in 2020. I won't talk about because that's domestic terrorism. But it concerns me that people don't feel like elections are, are, are free and accurate. It doesn't even matter the truth of matter. So that would be a top priority, but I don't necessarily think federalizing elections is the answer. Thank you. Candidate Schakowsky. I think everyone in every state should be able to have the right to vote without um, all kinds of voter suppression laws that have been passed uh, around, the, uh, around the country. Things that have had absolutely discriminatory um, effects on who can vote and who cannot vote. And we need to establish rules for voting everywhere so that all people can be sure that, that they, that they can, can vote. We have seen some suggestions of laws that would be proposed that would actually allow states to change electors so that they could override what the people in their own states have voted in terms of certifying presidential elections. Like in 2004, Ohio, like the letter you wrote. Hey, candidate Rice. I just think that's very important context for people to know that she voted to overturn that election. I think you need to let what candidate Tchaikovsky yeah. finish. So yeah, I, 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 am, I am absolutely in favor of setting the rules of the road that every single um, eligible voter will know that they will be able to go to the polls. And I'm hoping that some of those rules will look like Illinois that would, in our state, which has actually increased the ability of people to, to vote, um, vote by, by mail, um, you know, without any, uh, you know, having to make excuses. Um, and, and so um, I, I have long been a big supporter. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll start with you, candidate Schakowsky. Um, what, if anything, should the federal government do to reduce the role of money in American elections? We know there we had a bill that uh, actually passed the House of Representatives, H.R. 1, that uh, called for the people and including in that were, um, uh, was a portion that would actually help get the big money out of politics. You know, we have seen really a lot more small donors getting involved in, uh, in, in elections right now, and that is good. But we also see that really, really rich people have been able to um, say that, um, you know, being a, a big corporation is the same as being an individual. And that was a ruling of the Supreme Court. And uh, that is not the case in my view, that we should um, not allow large corporations to give uh, uh, virtually unlimited um, uh, you know, money to, uh, to, to fix campaigns uh, and, and to have their way with the American people. Thank you. Candidate Rice, same question. I get asked all the time from intelligent people, what's a congressperson? And the best way to describe it is it's a lot like the movie Pinocchio except we're real people that are trying our best to be puppets. And it's really sad to see a lot of my side too, of people selling out to all sorts of special interests, big ones, but also small ones. You'd be surprised. A lot of people will sell out for like $2,000. It's really pathetic. And the solution is uh, on the PAC side, there's just no transparency and no limit. Uh, one person can donate $40 million to a campaign. And I'm not sure about everyone listening. If someone gave you $40 million, you're probably going to owe them a lot. And then on the in individual side is the problem is corporate aren't treated like people. Individuals can only give like about uh, $1,300. And so I think the solution is a compromise is to raise the limits that individuals can, uh, can contribute. I'm not going to sell out for two grand, maybe some other people, maybe Hunter Biden would. And then on the PAC side, there needs to be transparency. It's, it's just not right. It's just not American. Like you could literally have shadow uh, like elected officials because it's just too much money. And if it's going to be that much money, at least have some transparency on, on where that's coming from. Because when individuals contribute, you got to say what your job is, how much it is. You have to be an American citizen. And with PACs and non-for-profits, they found a way around that. So we need a major reform on non-for-profits. Not you guys, though. You guys are cool. Just kidding. We need some reforms there, too. And for offer PACs. It's gone out of hand. Thank you. Candidate Rice, what measures do you support to address election security? 
for election security is I'm, I'm for voter ID, which I guess was racist. You know, cheeseburger ID wasn't racist, but voter ID is racist. So that's a new new thing. And uh, it's something that's very concerning because people talk about uh, uh, voter fraud. And there was a great example. I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, Barry Morphew in Colorado, who actually voted for uh, his, his wife is missing and he, vote, he got charged with voter fraud for voting on behalf of his wife. It's because in these polarized times, there's so many people on the right that feel justified that we got to stop communism. We'll do whatever it takes to cheat, even if it means that forging a ballot on the left. They're like, oh, Trump is literally Hitler. These Republicans are anti-democracy. And so if I fill out all the, the ballots in my apartment building for my family, it's not a big deal. And so uh, electric security does need to be a big concern. ID would be a big, big step in the right direction. But there, there's a lot we, we should do in terms of like actually looking at voter fraud beyond, beyond the accounting method. Because the tricks that people do are more like human tricks of like people like sh uh, voter shopping of someone that like, has two different addresses. It's like they go to college in Ohio and they live in Illinois. They don't think their vote counts. They choose Ohio. Or uh, like mail-in absentee fraud, which has been a huge issue in Illinois over the years. And uh, we should just like, Congress should use the bully pulpit, use the subcommittee powers to root out fraud and then have some base level like minimum um, so people feel secure about the elections. Thank you. Thank you, candidate Chikowski. You know, we have seen the unfortunate testimony from people on, on, on television talking about how they were harassed for being ordinary citizens who wanted to work at the polls and make sure that the elections were observed by regular people. That's what we always have had is, uh, is poll workers who often had been senior citizens and regular people who wanted to contribute to the um, smooth running of elections, neighbors and, and friends. Now it's kind of a dangerous thing to do. People are afraid to go to the polls because people are harassing them. People are standing over their shoulders. People are trying to prevent the um, just the 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 everyday voting um, at uh, at the polls. So we have to have the kind of security that makes sure that this is still something that people who want to serve their communities, who want to have fair elections, will be able to uh, to to participate in. Um, and I, I would hate to, to see the, the day when, you know, we um, have to, you know, people are just too, af too afraid to go. So security at the polls, and of course we have to have the, the good voting machines, we have to have a verifying process. Um, I like the way we have it in, in Illinois where you can see exactly how you, uh, you, you voted. I think we have a good model here in Illinois. Thank I want your husband's job. I want to bust people Thank out. You. No, right. you can't do that. Yeah. The rules are you answer the question, the, your opponent answers the question, period. So we'll start with candidate Chikowski going into re reproductive rights and health care. Do you think that Congress should pass federal legislation to either guarantee or restrict access to reproductive health services, including abortion? There's no question that uh, the vast majority of Americans, regardless of party, even regardless of gender, men and women alike, um, want to see the restoration of the rights to uh, control our own bodies, the freedom to make decisions on our own, not have politicians make those decisions. We have seen over and over again that the Supreme Court and the um, Republicans in the House and Senate are out of touch with where the American, American people are. But the good news is Congress can override that. The House of Representatives are, has already voted once now to restore abortion rights in the House of Representatives. Um, we call on the Senate to act. This probably will, this will have to wait till after the election, but then it could happen. And, and Joe Biden has said he would sign into law that abortion rights. We have also seen remarkably the vast majority of senators in the House of Representatives vote against um, birth control, birth control which is um, used by 98% of, uh, of Americans, and they voted against 
the distribution of any kind of uh, uh, birth control. It's gone way out of control. Um, women in particular are, it's like a tsunami out there, are absolutely furious, but they've been joined by, again, the vast Thank majority you. of Americans who want Thank you. abortion rights. Candidate Rice. Your I wouldn't take Joe Biden's word for that. He doesn't, he's talking to dead people right now. So I wouldn't take his word for that. And I wouldn't take Congress's word for that either. Because uh, for the last 30, while well, you've been in office the last 30 years, there's been several periods where uh, Democrats have had a majority and even a super majority in 2008 and 2009. And the reason why you guys haven't codified Roe into law is because you know a lot of the purple and red states don't want that. And all the pro-life people I know, they want exceptions for uh, like when a mother's life's in danger, for example, I've met one pro-life group that's for that. And now every most pro-choice people I know say they want it to be a choice between their uh, between the woman and, and a doctor, the birthing person and a doctor. And that, that, that is implying some sort of regulation. And so there's so many different issues within the broad sphere of abortion. And I'm open, I'm open to work with my constituents, but it's like, what's the specific, like what's the specific bill that you were saying? Like stuff to restrict and, and stuff to, like what have you, uh, for some restrictions, not be before some access. There's like 150 different abortion topics. And so like, if you were proposing to make it enshrined that a woman can get an abortion for life's in danger, I'd support that. But if it was for like, we're going to let someone have an abortion at nine months because the baby's black and they're racist. Most Americans would be against that. And so they're just trying to divide us. They're trying to make this the top issue so that we forget about energy prices and the fact that we're like, might have world war in uh, the next few weeks. And so it's a complete distraction to joke. Congress could have done something about the last 30 years. They don't want to do anything about it. And it's really like a judicial type issue. It's not a Congress issue. It's more of something to talk to your Senator about or your judge about because in the, the day there, there's a to decide. Thank you. So, candidate Rice, what, if anything, should Congress do to ensure quality health care and an affordable cost for all? Make it cheaper. Like the, we're talking about the Affordable Care Act ever. Why did it take two billion dollars to make a website? Like I am all hands on board on how to make health care cheap. I'm open to anything. And uh, it's really sad because it really seems like there's problems at the pharmaceutical level. There's problems at the hospital level, problems at the doctor's level and problems at the insurance level. And so we, there's there's not just like one solution. Uh, to that problem and there's gonna be a lot of compromise like on the pharmaceutical front is i think they uh we should allow them to ha extend their patent laws they should if they cost a billion dollars to come with medicine and 10 years of clinical trials they should maybe get to keep it for 12 years if we can keep mickey mouse trademark for 100 years and so maybe throw them a bone there give them a couple years and then the united states is one of two countries including new zealand where uh, pharmaceutical companies are able to advertise on tv and that scares me that a lot of people up at night uh weak-minded tired think that they have illnesses they don't have and they're calling their doctor for uh for drugs that maybe not even shouldn't exist and so i think we should make it illegal to advertise pharmaceutical drugs on tv and then we also should extend their their path so to make more money are two solutions thank you candidate Shikowski, same question well we agree that i think direct to uh, to consumer advertising on television it should be stopped we're the only country that really does that um but the pharmaceutical industry, um, it, the, the greed is never ending. Americans pay two to three times more for the exact same drugs um, as people in, in other countries. And that's why I am so happy, again, in the Inflation Reduction Act, we began the, are beginning the process of having Medicare able to negotiate with the drug companies for lower prices. And if they raise their prices, over the rate of inflation, they're gonna to have to give rebates back to consumers. We also limited the price in that bill, um, uh, out-of-pocket costs to $2,000 a year for seniors. I know that still sounds like a lot, but I know seniors that pay $2,000 a month. And now we're only charging $35 to Medicare beneficiaries per month for their insulin, which is gonna help a lot. We also, in that legislation, um, extended the lowering of prices within the Affordable Care Act. Um, and that is going to help literally millions of people to have lower prices. And Medicare, for the first time, is showing in, on Part A a lowering of the uh, cost of um, their premiums. So there's some good news. Thank you. Let's move on to gun violence and criminal justice, starting with candidate Schakowsky. 
what, if any, steps should be taken by Congress to curb gun violence in our country? You know, some years ago, I sat down on the House floor along with my dear late friend, um, uh, John Lewis. Um, we were fighting to, to get an end to gun violence by passing some legislation and taking on the um, gun manufacturers and the National Rifle Association. Well, we've made progress. We finally got in three, after three decades, a bipartisan bill um, that has a number of provisions, four or five provisions that are actually going to decrease the number of deaths because of, of, of gun violence. We're gonna um, hold, um, it's a call, ends a boyfriend loophole, make sure that anyone's convicted of uh, domestic violence, they can't have a gun. Um, we also passed a bill, the red flag law, which says that um, now um, if you are, uh, you know someone who is of danger to themselves or others, it can be adjudicated that they a gun will be um, kept away from them. The House of Representatives actually passed um, a ban on assault weapons, and you know how important that is to many of us um, in, in in our in our communities. Uh, we know that Highland Park is all too fresh in the minds of, of many, many people in our communities. Um, and we now are calling on the Senate to do the same thing. And finally, to say to the gun industry, you know, um, we can do wait, we can do more, but we're making a good start. Thank you. Candidate Rice. Yeah, I mean, I, I think gun law, like all laws are, are just kind of irrelevant if crime is illegal. And when I say that Jan Schakowsky made my life tangibly worse, like the most pressing thing I hear from community members, not just me, is Kim Fox's election. And I hope you regret that decision to endorse her and really fundraise and push for her. Because uh, I think most of my community members are really scared and like freaking out about that. Like who cares what the laws are if you're allowed to just like be the Wild Wild West Grand Theft Auto. And in regards to Highland Park, probably the saddest day of my campaign was picking up trash uh, like right during the event. Because uh, the shooting was in the morning and there was like a seven, eight hour period where he was on the run. And uh, I think we need to think about two things in regards to gun violence is there's one prevention, which a lot, of, a lot of Democrats like to focus on, but also the response. And it's really scary to see that we really aren't responding to these things uh, correctly in Highland Park. Like, God bless that it was, you know, damage wasn't worse. But I do think we're giving people wrong advice, like we saw in Uvalde. They're giving the same advice in Highland, Highland Park. That they're, we're telling people to just like stay indoors, cluster and not not defend yourself or go elsewhere and uh we have to just accept that it's reality that we live in a crazy society and we're probably gonna see more of these mass shootings and we have to have a response plan we don't so i would love to just make mass shootings illegal but that's that's not gonna stop the problem especially in chicago where as i said crimes are illegal there was a, a school shooting in, in dallas which similar laws to chicago and the mass shooter was out a couple days later so like who cares if we don't enforce the lawsuit Thank you. There are red flags and assault weapons bans in Highland Park, and that still happens. So, do you think that the U.S. is adequately protected against 21st century threats like cyber attacks and the destruction of infrastructure critical to inflammation, information flow? Canada Rice. I'm glad you asked that question because one of the most like just unwritten stories the last few years has been the natural gas acts that have stopped natural gas production, and. Uh, yeah, no, we are. And the, the natural, some of the natural gas hacks occurred because employees were carrying Google Drive forms. And so a lot of the solutions aren't going to cost billions of dollars. It's just procedure and just like education. But yes, scares me big time. That's why I, I am sympathetic to Jan Schakowsky's voter fraud thoughts in 2004. There's been a bunch of great movies from ha about hackers, Killing Democracy, Kill Switch, uh, DEF CON. DEF CON happens every year. It shows you how scary and advanced these hackers are getting. And so, yes, big time uh, scare. And a lot of it is, is not just money, it's also just preparing our 420 federal agencies. Thank you. Um, I'm hearing a lot of background somewhere. Is... That's probably me, we're at Galati's. We're what? We're at Galati's Pizza in Cary, Illinois. Round of applause oh, for Galati, okay. there we go. Was... Yeah. The noise is from a restaurant, I see. Yeah. Um, candidate Schakowsky. So I served um, for six years on the Intelligence Committee. 
And there was a lot of talk about cybersecurity and the necessity. And so, you know, the United States is definitely um, uh, having to put an, an increased focus on making sure that all of our technologies are uh, up to par. But, you know, there are a lot of existential forces we have to make uh, against us. Like we have to make sure um, as much as we can that we keep um, Iran from having any nuclear weapon. And that's why I'm in favor of negotiating an Iran deal so that they can't be a nuclear power. And that Russia that is now uh, suggesting the use of uh, a nuclear weapon, which is very dangerous. This is something that is definitely a national security, but um, climate is also an existential, is an existential threat. And the more we can get rid of fossil fuels, the safer we will be as a country. Thank you. Candidate Schakowsky, starting with you, what measures would you support to address immigration issues? Well, as a first generation American myself, I'm certainly um, uh, very sympathetic, not only just sympathetic, but I think for our economy, um, the, the um, need for, uh, for, for, for workers, we are a nation of immigrants and I've always been for comprehensive um, reform in our broken um, system dealing with immigration. It's, it's got to be rehauled. We have to make a way, a pathway to citizenship for people who have been here for a long time, have proven themselves to be worthy of being American citizens. Um, we have to um, make sure that the, we honor the diversity of this country by welcoming people, people here. I'm glad to see that we're welcoming people from, uh, from Ukraine. Um, and, 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 other, and, other, and other countries, but we have to have a system that allows people who cross the border, who are doing it legally, seeking asylum, are not incarcerated. Thank you, Candidate Rice. Yes, thank you. I live on Little India on Devon Street, and we have Indians next to Pakistanis, next to first-generation uh, first Russians, next to first-generation Slovenians. And it's the most American park in, in Chicago, also the most Republican precinct in Chicago. What a coincidence. But uh, that being said, is uh, Congress has been kicking the can on immigration since I've been alive, 1991. And they pretend like they care. They don't. It's, we've, we've seen the parties kind of switch sides. Democrats used to be very anti-immigrants because it affected union pay. And Republicans used to be very for it because it was cheap labor. And now it's switched a little bit. And people are suffering. And during Trump, I saw a lot of Democrats crying and caring because there were kids in cages. And I, I cared about that. But now we see kids stacked high in cages under the, the Texas sun, under highway underpasses. And I see crickets and I just see political footballs. And so it's a real shame. We should have border security. Uh, fentanyl is a major problem. Two friends died in the last week from overdoses. So it's really sad. And uh, we really should address the drug cartels that control, control the border. 95% of the crossings are coming through drug cartels. So we should have a, a safe, secure border, but also a, a finally an efficient immigration system. So people don't have to wait all this time and spend all this money to come to this country. Thank you. Well, the dis we need to decide whether we're gonna have one last question or closing. Um, let's go with one last question, which means we'll go over a little bit past 645. And we'll start with you, candidate Rice. What proposals do you have to address the increasing cost of living, including housing and healthcare? Everything links back to energy. And so I would lower energy prices. It's because unfortunately we live in a society where people don't produce, store, or grow their own stuff. Everything is made somewhere else and transported us. And by just like kind of embracing this Chinese energy uh, fraud, uh, we're making everything more expensive. Everything requires energy to be produced. And so I would value American energy, whether, like, and I'm all hands on deck. My background is energy. So if we're mining rare earth minerals in America, I would support that. And so I would do everything I can to drive down energy prices. And that would solve a lot of issues, inflation and also the Russia war. We bankrolled that war. When natural gas prices and oil prices doubled, uh, Russia has the most amount of natural gas reserves in the world in top three oil. And so we, we gave them the money to go on this endeavor in Ukraine. And then my opponent gave them the money to prolong that $7 billion bailout, uh, the, which is now in accounting. And uh, I, would, I would just focus on energy to lower inflation. 
and then reduce the cost of government in creative ways. Like one of my like main proposals is we have over 400 federal agencies. A lot don't need to exist. A lot could be consolidated and they should be spread out the, uh, across the United States for philosophical reasons, for cost reasons, and it would revitalize local economies that are struggling. Thank you. Candidate Schakowsky. Housing and healthcare. You know, we have um, homelessness. We have people that call my office every day looking for affordable housing. This is the richest country in the world at the richest time in, in history. We can do better on both fronts, on healthcare and on housing. We pay more for healthcare in the United States, twice as much as the next costly country in the world. We have to make changes fundamentally. I'm for Medicare for all, for universal health care for, for all. I am for affordable housing, an investment in affordable housing in this country. And there are lots of plans that we could do. Um, the, there are so many uh, strip malls right now that are failing. Um, you know, these could be turned into uh, mixed income housing, lower income housing. Um, to, to give people a place to, to live. Actually, it's more expensive to take care of people on the street than it would be to house them in safe, affordable housing. Thank you. We finished 12 questions and now it's time for closing. We've gone over a little bit. We will start with candidate Schakowsky. You have 90 seconds for your closing. Yes, League of Women Voters, I don't have to tell you that elections really matter. And what is coming up right away? And I know that you also, and I have been encouraging people to get out to vote. It's absolutely critical. This election is a pivotal election right now. I think it's a, an election that um, distinguishes between, are we going to have a real democracy um, where people have um, their, uh, have, have, have power, have freedom, and we want everyone to get out to vote. Reproductive rights can be saved. We can make sure that all people have the, um, the, the, the rights and the freedom that they deserve, but it takes a vote. We can do this. It's a short distance away and many of the things that may be bothering you can be corrected in the next, after the next election. So let's go out and vote. Elections really do matter. Thank you. Candidate Rice, your closing, please. I've been involved in politics my entire life. It's just the right thing to do. Not because I fit in with any of these people. I feel like it's just a soulless bunch. And now that I'm on the other side of things, it's I'm really proud of myself that I have not sold my soul out yet. And I just keep hearing the same lies over and over again. And if you want to believe that, if you want to believe it, it's, oh, the democracy is at stake. And it's if you vote for me, then in two years, that will fix things. Last 28 years, my bad, but the next two years, that's the one. Just give me $25 tonight and we'll, we'll solve everything. If you like that mentality, I totally respect that. And as I said, I love all of you. It doesn't matter if we disagree. I think the two biggest things lacking from politics are one, good intent. You should share the same goals, want the same things. And competency. It does seem like there's a lot of stupid people. And I do support a dementia test for, uh, for public officials. Like if we got to say COVID test, why not take a dementia test? And so uh, in closing, I love you. If you want more transparency, if you want more access, if you want more love, vote for me. Election starts uh, October 24th, early voting, and November number 8th. And if you want to vote for Jan Schakowsky, that's okay, okay too. I'll go out and vote for her. Election starts November 25th. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't call me a fraud. Our time is up for this one. We appreciate your participation. That's not the Bears game. That's not the Bears game. That's definitely not the Bears game. We appreciate your participation, whether you're a candidate or a voter. It is essential to preserve our freedom and our country. For more information, please visit the nonpartisan website, IllinoisVoterGuide.org, where the recording of this forum will be posted on each candidate's page, as well as all of the League of Women Voters sponsoring the former forum's website. It will be after tomorrow. Please remember to vote on or before November 8th. Thank you to the candidates and the Voter Service Committee that organized this forum and to the viewing public. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.